So we're here at uh, CES 2012 at the E-Ink. So what's the latest? Um, E-Ink has historically been very successful in the e-book space with a number of uh, monochrome devices, just like the Nook I have here, the Amazon Kindle I have here. These are six inch displays using our electrophoretic uh, display technology. And uh, we've shipped several million units worldwide to several different customers in the e-reader space. Most of these uh, are used in the area of leisure reading and we are branching out beyond e-books into a number of other areas. I wanted to give you some examples. Uh, here is a 300 dots per inch uh, display that e-ink makes uh, in collaboration with Epson to who's producing a unique chip that will drive this display. It's a very high resolution display as you can see and we are able to create devices that will go beyond publishing into what we call e-document space. So our plan is to replace the uh, electronic uh, um, forms that are used uh, by different folks in their laptops, replacing printed paper, pads of paper, and that sort of a thing. And uh, these devices will have uh, Wi-Fi support, they will have uh, pen input, and you will have the ability to edit and you're going to replace your pad of paper with a device like this. Um, and some applications you may imagine are in inventory logistics, in the doctor's office, and uh, attorneys and other office people carrying this uh, would be what we would imagine as potential applications for this high resolution display. We can put a number of um, images on them which uh, will be very suitable for this 300 dpi display for example circuits uh, graphs charts maps and that sort of a thing uh, i'm going to show you another example so how how high resolution is this this is 300 dots per inch display most of the displays we ship are 167 to 200 dots per inch this is almost twice that uh, in resolution so is there a number of pixels you would count as well uh, you could, but usually what we do is that would depend on the size of the display. We can make this in pretty much different sizes. This example I have is 11.5 inch display. We can make them 9.7 inch or some other diagonal size. And uh, uh, the main um, feature here is the uh, pixel density, which is 300 dots per inch in this particular sample. So with the right software, collaboration tools, for example, uh, schools and businesses and lawyers and all these kinds of people, they would basically want to use it. You can sell 100 million of these. <laughs> I hope so. But uh, th that is the target market. Um, I'm going to show you another example of a device. If you look at the number yeah. one feature in e-ink, uh, electrophoretic display technology is the ability to read uh, a text which is very similar to printed paper and we are at the point where I can say it's even better than printed paper in certain types of application and we now have the pen input available on our um, devices so we are replacing both uh, printed paper and pen uh, with our product you can see that I'm able to write uh, on this uh, a device. So the idea here is to allow people to highlight, annotate, uh, write notes in the border and uh, um, use this to fill out forms. And uh, Is it similar to Wacom or is it Wacom? Uh, this, is, this particular one is not but it is very similar to the Wacom technology. It's a digitizer in the bottom and, uh, and it's super fast use. response time? The response time is very fast as you can see. I'm just moving my pen uh, like you would normally move and you can see that what is the speed of, of the, the input? Is that based on the processor or is Correct. it e-ink related? No, um, the e-ink display would uh, come into play uh, and uh, in this particular application since it's just black and white we can um, uh, use the um, native speed which is about 250 milliseconds is the response time for the e-ink display back to white or white to black. I'm also going to show you other examples. I have here with me uh, a color e-ink display based on our Triton uh, display material. And in the past, I used to show 
demonstration products. This is an actual device that is shipping, and uh, a, uh, uh, these devices have already been shipped into the school system in Russia, and students are already using them uh, as a replacement for textbook. So, Obviously, how many are they shipping? Uh, a, a lot of units have already been deployed, and uh, this is uh, we are still in early stages with the deployment of this device, but we see a lot of promise in the education sector. We expect at, uh, the education to be one of the largest markets for the e-ink, uh, uh, both the monochrome and the color Triton displays. So what, you, what I have with me in my hand is not just a replacement for one textbook or 10 textbooks uh, or um, a, a, even an entire set of books for the school. This is a library. So literally you can put a thousand books or more on any one of these devices and uh, you're replacing the library and literally every student has a library on their own. And what's wonderful about this, it increases the interaction between the student and the teacher. Uh, your grades and the tests are assessed almost instantaneously. Um, reference material is available pretty much um, on a... Uh, Sorry, I exited the, the page. Okay. We'll Sorry. to Jen to yeah. see if she can bring it back. Because it's in <laughs> Russian. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, what is this over there? Okay, I want to come back. I want to show you one more image yeah. before we go for the United States. Sorry. Do you want me? Yeah, can you use like this? Okay. So what can you do with it? So I'm going to show you um, another image uh, where you can see that the uh, color feature in the electrophoretic display allows you to convey more information and uh, the students now have a much better learning tool than they had with just printed books. So uh, your books are never going to be out of stock. There's no late fees from your library, and uh, um, the content is available 24-7. This device goes to your home so the student can continue their learning uh, from the classroom to their home. With um, It's somewhat seamless, and you have access to content all the time. It is access to content, availability of content, and uh, access of uh, access to information in remote locations will make these kind of devices very, very valuable in the school system. What is the difference in price between color and non-color? Um, typically, even in our color, we are still making a monochrome display and putting a color filter on top. The color filter is the only additional cost. Most of the cost in a device like this would probably be in the software that our customer has to create uh, to make use of all of the features, additional features you get due to the uh, color uh, addition in the device compared to the monochrome. Uh, I'm going to show you another example of the same color display, the Triton material. Uh, uh, what we've done here is we've increased the size of the pixel. Okay. When you increase the size of the pixel, you can see that the color is much more saturated. And, uh, and this is the exact same material as I showed you previously in an e-reader device. So uh, when you make the pixels larger, we allow more light going into the system, which makes our color much more saturated. We see applications in the signage space where you're not looking at a device from uh, six inches away, you're looking at a device from six feet or 60 feet away, and the larger pixels uh, are perfect for that sort of an application. And we can generate very uh, saturated colors, and they're extremely low power, they're very thin, extremely light and you can literally laminate these things on uh, non-flat surfaces in the future and uh, we, we hope to achieve very good uh, uh, But just to understand, usage. is there a backlight or what there is There is no backlight. Um, There's no backlight? There's no backlight um, so, and it's very thin. Even in my demo, uh, literally the thickness of this display could be about the thickness of what you see here in uh, another example of an e-ink material I have. Um, this has both the front plane and back plane in, a, uh, in one of our surf displays and our display can be extremely thin. Um, so if you look at uh, the monochrome displays that we've been making, this is an actual e-ink display uh, material. So you can see it's extremely thin, and it, it is all plastic. And this is the direction we're going to make uh, displays without glass and uh, 
conform to non-flat surfaces and get into um, some of the non-publishing applications like signage. And uh, what happens when when it looks like they're turned off? What what is that? Just going back to black, or what, what are you doing? Yeah, essentially, what you do is you're bringing the uh, white particles to a surface, and you see the color because it reflects off the white particle. When you bring the black particles to the surface, what it does is it absorbs the light, and you don't see a color; you just see uh, all black. But they all—they are not the same blacks, all three. So what, why, why is that's that? because of the color filter. But in general, from a distance, you will see that it's all pretty much black. Totally black. It'll be totally black, and then you can see the different colors depending on what images you're gonna. Not less uh, black than a than a device without the color filters. It's going to be as black as the other. If we can make it just as black as the other because essentially we're using the same uh, uh, pigments. Um, uh, to, the color filter will add some effect to it, but it's not going to be significant when you view it at a distance uh, in a signage application. So how soon is this technology in product? The beauty of it is we already have the Triton display material available. We are in mass production, and it's a matter of getting into some of the signage applications. We're working with a number of companies at this point, and uh, we will see future deployments of signage products using but, the Triton. But is this as good as that product, the Jetbook, basically? Um, essentially the material is the same. What the Jetbook does, uh, uh, which is better than this one, is that the Jetbook is high resolution and uh, the Jetbook uh, is able to uh, show a lot more information. The pixels are very small, so you can use it in an e-reader type application, whereas this one are much larger pixels. That's why you see the, uh, uh, the, the this is targeted towards um, signage rather than... This is not going to be e-reader. E it won't be in e-readers yeah. at this point. It'll be in signage type products. I'm going to show you uh, some other examples of e-ink displays um, that we think uh, will have a lot of traction. Uh, this is a concept, it is not a real device at this point, but um, we were able to put an e-ink display on a concept uh, power drill. So typically in most power drills you have a battery and you have no idea whether there is any juice left in it or not. And if you climb up the ladder and go on top of the roof and find that uh, there is no battery, it can be pretty frustrating. And we now have the ability to put an e-ink display on one of these devices. It will show you the power without actually consuming battery uh, power. And um, even when switched off, it will retain the last image showing how much battery is left on uh, one of the devices. And we can also show additional information like speed and direction and so on. And so, how do you cut the screen? Or do you cut the screen, or is it just hidden? We can, square? Uh, we can actually cut the display into any different shape, just like what we've done here. You can see that the display is non rectangular. And uh, pretty much we can cut them into a round shape. We can cut into several different shapes. Uh, you actually have a wristwatch that ha is round with a, uh, with a display that not only is the display round, there's a hole in the middle of the display, and that's something you cannot uh, do with most other technologies. E-Ink is very unique in its ability to do uh, unique shapes with these displays. Um, I'm also going to show you uh, a new product that was just launched this week, and we're very excited about this product. This is from our customer Eton, and uh, it combines the solar technology with the e-ink display, Bluetooth, in uh, this device called the Ruckus. And it's uh, uh, meant for outdoor applications, very rugged, and uh, it's virtually indestructible. And uh, uh, it's a music player, and uh, you can see that when you have a solar uh, technology like this, you want to make sure that whatever information you're depicting on the device, uh, the, uh, the display does not consume a lot of power. And all of the solar power that's generated is used uh, to listen to music rather than show information. So the e-ink display is a perfect combination for this sort of an application, and we will see many more deployments like this. And the beauty of this is when you take this outdoors, the display looks gorgeous. And uh, it is a perfect example of where our display matches well with this particular technology. I'm going to show you a couple of more examples of wristwatches. You can see we've got this wristwatch, which is made with our segmented surf displays. It's curved, and uh, it is uh, a unique shape, and uh, uh, it is a luxury watch, which is marketed by our customer Phosphor Watches. And this is a matrix display uh, where we can have uh, images that will uh, 
you can basically change the images on this wristwatch. It's made by Seiko, and uh, it was uh, recently launched. And you can put pictures on this. Uh, obviously, it'll uh, depict uh, time. It's got it's solar powered, and uh, you can see that it's got many many features in it. Makes it very unique, sunlight readable, very thin, and uh, um, these kind of products which use e ink technology in non publishing applications are something we are pretty excited about. So, how many uh, orders do you need to start making a different shape? Um, in case of segmented displays, we really don't need a lot of orders because um, the cost to make a segmented display uh, does not involve in fabricating a backplane in a um, fab. This is much easier done, so we can go with fairly lower volumes as compared to maybe a 6 or 9 inch display that's made for reading applications where we need to uh, pick a certain size and run with it. Uh, so in the larger displays, we are able to build very large diagonal size. This is a 9.7. I have 11.5 inch display. And uh, these are fairly easy for us to do because we make our displays in rolls several feet wide and we can go uh, about a kilometer long with our technology. And uh, whereas a lot of our competitors are restricted to smaller diagonal sizes due to certain limitations with their technology, we are able to go to larger sizes we actually have color displays that are uh, uh, not just prototypes but are in uh, mass production that are being deployed right now in schools and obviously the non-publishing applications are plenty we have several different opportunities to market our products into different devices so we see a lot of um, new products coming out uh, most of the advantages we have are we can take our display and put them into applications which never had a display before. To basically going in uh, applications that uh, previously never had any information. We're making these surfaces smart uh, with our technology. And uh, the readability, the low power consumption, the thin and light nature, and uh, the ruggedness of this display. This is probably one of the most rugged displays in the market. And uh, literally, I can pound my fist on this. I can drop this. It is not going to break. And that is the future of uh, the display technology.